What is up, family? Right back at y'all with another uh, demo. This is going to be the after of the before and after um, sound comparison in between the uh, the standard or stock Vizio soundbar, which is this right here. As you guys can see, all I did was just connect some wires there. I took the speakers out of here, put them into the enclosures here, and just wired them up. I coupled the uh, the left and right channels with a uh, tweeter, and that's pretty much all I've done to uh, to improve that sound and put it in a very large enclosure, as you guys can see. And we're just gonna jump right off into the uh, sound test of this. I still have the the Blue Snowball microphone. I do know that this thing is way too close to this here. Somebody uh, actually pointed that out in the comment sections. But the thing about it is that since I did the original like that, I'm going to do this one like that. And I, I do I do know that you guys know that these are separate uh, boxes right here. But what I'm going to do, why, why I have the enclosures laid out like this here is because this is arrayed as it would be one long soundbar, which was uh, indicative of the original recording or sound test. So I'm going to be doing the same thing here. Enough yapping. We got some free YouTube music here. And I'm going to be giving you guys a demo test of this right about now. Let me go down and kind of get that same angle. <laughs> So that's on pause. All right. So as you guys probably did see here, um, 
My cats can't stand the music. Anytime I do a, a sound test, they completely just hide. They they run and they get in their little house and they're like, D, what are you doing? You're torturing our sensitive ears. But anyway, it's not about them. This thing here. So I don't know what you guys' opinion of it is thus far. Um, I know some of the sound is not going to um, translate over the phone. So I am going to be doing this over the mic. And my voice probably sounds a little bit distant right now and a lot more echoey because, like I said, the sounds are bouncing off the walls. But anyway, so my take on this, my take on this, some of you guys, I know all of you guys probably seen just now on that on that demo that the passive radiators are not activating at all during the demo. They're not activating at all. Uh, I know some guys probably seen also there's a screw missing here, but trust me, I got this thing screwed down so tight that doesn't even matter. And this thing is sealed. I didn't permanently glue or caulk these little tweeters right here. I just put some uh, some Gorilla tape around it and ensured a tight fit. Trust me, no air leakage is coming around this thing. Trust me. Uh, the same thing goes throughout the uh, the enclosure. However. What is going on here? The point I'm trying to make is that the enclosures, even though they look awesome to me, they look they, they look pretty cool because they look big enough for me to set my television on top of this thing and have like somewhat of a sound bar just out of this thing alone. If I wanted to array it like this, you know, for functionality. Um but the enclosures are, are much too big for this little small driver. This driver is only two and a half inches. You understand what I'm saying? So it does not constitute this much volume and airspace for a driver this big. Uh, the reason being is because the driver is not, it, it cannot compress this much air in, in, uh, enough to actually activate this uh, radiator right here. So what, what do I mean by that? Um, in order for a sealed enclosure to sound good or to perform at its optimum, it has to have, it has to be able to compress the air. Um, that is actually, and it doesn't take much if built properly, a sealed enclosure, it does not take much for the, for the, uh, the driver to sound good. You don't need a whole lot of X max with a sealed enclosure because of that. I mean, with a tight seal, uh, minimal movement give you that that compression that, you, that you're that you looking for, that you want. Uh, whereas in a, uh, a, uh, a ported enclosure, things change a bit more. But this enclosure right here is much too large uh, for that small driver to be able to compress the air and get that that drum like sound that snappiness and that 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 optimal response that it can get uh inside of this enclosure right here is just much too small to do that it can't compress the air so another issue that i have with this whole setup is that well before i do that before i even get off into my second issue let me just give you guys a little Example of what I'm talking about here. Let me see if I can get this thing to focus. It's not even, it's really not even picking up on camera that good. But I'm trying to give you guys a, let you guys see that it's moving this driver a very minute. And when I say this thing is, is, uh, is sealed, it is sealed. It's just not enough. Uh, surface area to compress the air, not even to move this out any. That's why this thing was bouncing all around up in there and this wasn't moving at all. Very bad design, very, very poor setup. So this kind of answers another question that I had quite some time ago about whether or not a sealed enclosure can be too big. And I was trying to answer a guy a uh, question and let him know that, yeah, your sealed enclosures can be uh, too big. That's why a, uh, a lot of manufacturers have their own 
recommended specs when it comes down to the air volume of their sealed enclosures. And typically, the sealed enclosures are much less uh, recommended air volume than you have that of the ported enclosures. So uh, this, the second thing that I dislike about this setup right here is the the fact that it did not perform like I thought it would in 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 terms of imaging. So when you have a surround sound setup, you want to achieve that separation of sound of left, right, and center channel. You need that 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 separation. You understand? So if you don't get that, if you can't here, like, let's just say, for instance, if there was a ball that bounced from this side of the screen all the way over to this side of the screen. So it goes from the right side of the screen and bounces to the left side of the screen. If you can't hear the sound of that ball bouncing in this speaker, translating to this speaker, and then ultimately ending only in this speaker, then... Your surround sound setup is pretty shitty, okay? And the surprising thing about, the reason why I wanted to do this is because I thought that I can improve the sound uh, quality of this sound bar because I didn't feel as though I was getting the separation that I wanted from this here uh, sound bar. In some movies, it performed just well, but in most movies, it just wasn't doing it for me. Not even the real surround channels were doing it for me. So I was like, you know what? If I can put this, these speakers in a separate enclosure and just spread the speakers wider, you understand? Spread them out, uh, manually spread them out, that that would help me. But what I found when doing that with this setup right here is that it sounded like crap. Everything sounded centered. Everything. Everything sounded centered no matter how wide I put the speakers out from each other. Everything still sounded like it was straight centered, and I hated that. I did. I did not like that at all. I mean, you got some music, right? Some 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 good audio files that have good uh good uh with like a lossless file that hasn't been compressed, you know, down to the point where you know there is no studio quality there where you still got separation of like instruments so you would hear more of the the, the drums over here you hear the snares over there and you would hear the horns somewhere else and you would hear you know the string instruments would be playing in another uh location and it just sounds so good when it all comes together but not even that was was doing me well with this setup when I had the speaker separated. However, when I put them together like this, it sounded amazing. <laughs> Straight mind blowing. I'm like, wait a minute. The further apart I spread the speakers, they still sounded like everything was centered, like I was still dealing with a, uh, a stereo setup opposed from when it's together and it's three this 3.1 or in this case, I had no subwoofer, so it's a 3.0 setup. Everything sounds amazing. It's amazing. And I'm like, well, given, you know, coupled with the fact that I'm not getting the compression that I want here, and also coupled with the fact that I'm not getting the imaging and sound separation, of, I'm, not, I'm just not getting that, uh, that, that experience that I want. I may as well just put these drivers right back in the enclosure that they came from and just say that, hey, Vizio knew what they were doing when they built this sound bar with these passive radiators and just call it fair. So I consider this a fail. D gets a fail on this one. But hey, we live and we learn. That's why we do this stuff to learn, you know, to teach each other. Hopefully somebody can come up with something better than this. I actually thought about Cutting the uh, the uh, the enclosures in half, I know that that would help out with the uh, with the compression of it. But I I just gave up on the whole thing on the simple strength that I'm still not getting that separation that I want in my in my uh, in my sounds. The sounds the audio doesn't pan the way that I want it to unless it's in this format like this. So this is truly made 
for this sound bar, for this setup right here. So I'm going to leave it like it is. Put these little drivers back in that sound bar and put it on eBay. <laughs> I think I'm going to get me another surround sound system, man. Now, don't get me wrong. I like the sound bar. I've had it for like three years now. You know, so I obviously like it, but I think I've outgrown it. Um, I'm going to, you know, uh, freshen up on my do-it-yourself skills and bring you guys along for the ride. So anyway, that's it for right now. That's my small rant about the uh, the sound bar restoration. So yeah, this is a fail from D for right now. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. If it was you, what would you do? How would you fix this? Would you try to fix this? Or would you just do what I did, toss in the hat and start from scratch again? So don't forget to leave the comments in the comment sections below. If you like the video, give it a thumb up. Don't forget to click the notification bells. I keep forgetting to tell you guys that. But if you don't click the notification bell, you won't get the new stuff. So if you want my new content, click the notification bell and I'll see you guys in the next one.